Hey everybody, this is Peter. In this video segment, we're going to install PFSense. We've had some requests for PFSense videos. It's a free firewall out there that you can download, install. Very secure firewall. It's been around for many years um, based on base, a Linux platform. Um, the video, the request that we actually recently had was for a VPN video. We're going to actually, we've had that video done. I've just got to do some editing on it. So can't remember the name of the person that actually requested it. It is coming. You'll have it soon enough. I figured, you know, we have the install here. We might as well do it. So let's go ahead now and select to install PFSense. And we're going to kill some of the actual um, booting up here so that you don't have to watch that stuff as we typically do with um, progress and status bars and so on. So here we can change our video font, screen map, key map. We don't care in this sentence, uh, in this case, we're just going to choose accept these settings and we're going to choose a quick and easy install. And now if we choose this, we're not going to get any more basically questions. It's just going to go ahead and install the actual uh, uh, firewall for us. So again, skip some of the progress bar. Here we have the choice of choosing symmetric multiprocessing kernel, so something that can support more than one processor. Um, you can choose basically depending on the hardware you have in this case. We'll go ahead and choose the multiprocessing. And after that, it's pretty much done. You choose one thing that you're going to notice here when we choose to reboot is that it gives it a default IP address. So after the reboot's complete, you can go ahead, open a browser, and connect to 192.168.1.1. All right, so the default username is admin. Default password is pfsense. So we're going to go ahead, boot it up again. We're just about done here, and there's some basic things that you have to configure. So one thing that you get asked for is, do you want to set up VLANs now? We're going to go ahead, no, do a nice basic install of the actual firewall. Enter the LAN interface name for auto detection. In this case, we can keep it at EM1. We can use whatever we want. Uh, we have three interfaces, so we'll choose EM2 in this case. Enter the WAN interface. We can go ahead and choose EM0 in this case. Again, enter the optional one interface name if we wanted to in this case, and that's going to be EM1 because it's the only other interface that we have. And do we want to proceed? We're going to confirm those settings. Go ahead and click on yes or choose yes and uh, go ahead and boot the system up. So it's configuring the firewall, starting the web config, you know, starting DHCP, DNS uh, services, and so on if you're going to actually use those. And then now we're brought into the console setup. All right, so from the console setup here, you can see our WAN by default DHCP setup is 192.168.92.136. On our LAN interface, we have 192.168.1.1 as it stated when we first re uh, rebooted the box. We want to make sure that we're actually on the same network. I'm going to bring up our uh, network connections here on our Windows box and make sure we're on the same network and then basically choose to surf and ensure that we can actually get through the firewall by default here. So let's go ahead, check our network settings. As you can see here, we have DHCP enabled. So 192.168.1.199. We're on the same network, that's fantastic. Let's go ahead, connect to the actual firewall, and then we'll log in with the default username and password. You'll see here you get a nice little uh, web GUI with PFSense to actually configure any settings that you want. All right, so now when we first bring it up, we're going to have basically it provides us a wizard to uh, configure some of the basic settings that you need to run your firewall. So in this case, you know, your host name, domain name, any primary uh, DNS servers, secondary DNS servers, and so on. We're going to put the academypro.com in our domain name. In our DNS settings, we can go ahead and type in, you know, the IP address of our DNS servers. Go ahead and click on next. Here you have your time server host name. We can leave the default. We can choose our time zone. Um, which is important if you want to correlate the logs with any other devices on your network. On the WAN interface side, you can see we have DHCP, which is currently working. We don't really care to change that, but if you wanted to, this is where you'd do it. Um, you can also do DHCP client configuration stuff and so on. We're good with basically what we have right now. And right now, as you can see, it's set up to block private networks from entering uh, the WAN. So any of the you know 192.168 non-writable addresses and so on. So let's go ahead and click on next. And we're almost done, guys. 
In here, we can change our LAN IP if we wanted to, our subnet mask, and so on. We're going to leave it as the defaults, click on Next. And we're going to actually put in a real admin password and not to use the default, obviously. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see, guys, this is very actually easy to set up. They've made it really, really easy. So go ahead, reload asks for a new password and go ahead and press OK. That's pretty much it guys. As you can see now you have access to the actual GUI. You can come in here create firewall rules, VPN and so on and we will have that VPN video for you shortly. That's pretty much it guys. Thanks very much for coming out. That's how you set up a PFSense firewall.